Okay. Assalamualaikum and a very good day. I'd like to Dr. Ismail and Dr. Tanwa. Uh, today I will present about control system engineering BFF 0103. Uh, the project is uh, for MBIM. So my name is Amrul Intan, Regulative, and this is my group member, which is Kuan Zizan, Mama Aris Solihin bin Suhaimi, Lok bin Chen, Anwar bin Kamal, and Mama Hazim bin Zubay. Um, a very good day to the lecturers and the audience. Um, my name is Lo Bing Chen with metric number FB180021. So I will be um, presenting the introduction of our project. So in this coursework, uh, a controller is designed to fulfill the requirement of TS that less than 3 seconds and the percentage of OS that is less than 5%. Uh, it's also considered that the ball rolls without slipping and friction between the beam and the ball. Specific parameters are provided for the design. Uh, in the design, the system is first being tested by using an open loop system. Uh, result is obtained and observe the stability of using uh, this system. Then other controllers uh, designed such as proportional P control and proportional derivative control PD control were used to compare with the open loop system. Uh, proportional P control is a type of linear feedback control system, which this type of uh, system will use the reading of the sensor to look back into the whole system. Uh, as this is the simple form of uh, control that used in the closed loop system, it is aimed to minimize the fluctuation in the process only. Uh, on the other hand, proportional derivative PD control is a combination of feed forward and feedback control as it pro operates um, on both the current and predict. Uh, process condition, hence an ex expected output of the PD controller compared to the P controller should be better. Um, comparison between these two types of controller is made by observing the result plot in graph. Then by selecting suitable gains, we can control the behavior of the output function of the entire system. So that's all for me. I will pass to my next teammate. So. For the system equation methodology, uh, the second derivative of alpha has an effect on second derivative of r. So the formula is 0 equal to j of r square plus m uh, times r double dot plus mg sine alpha minus mra square. Then the following linear approximation of the system obtained by linearizing equation about beam angle alpha equal to zero. So the formula is j plus uh, j over r square plus m uh, times r double dot equal to negative mg alpha. Okay, then equation that connect beam angle to the angle is approximately linear using the formula below, which is alpha equal to d over l theta. Then the formula can be formed below after connecting all the formula is h j over r square plus m times r double dot equal to negative mg uh, times t over l theta. And second one is the transfer function methodology. So using the Laplace transform, the equation before can be derived, which is j over r square plus m times r s s square equal to negative mg times d over l theta s. So determine the transfer function by rearranging the equation and we get p s equal to r s over theta s equal to negative mg d over l j over r square plus m with s square with the one times a one over s square. So they are for me. I will proceed to the next chamber. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I am Anwar bin Kamal, FA10819. I'm, I'm involved in building the methodology for model in this moving. For the first step, uh, we create it with open in the smoothing and we will insert an integrator block from the Cantonese library 
and secondly we will insert a second integrator to the first of the first to the right of the first and we'll connect it with a line and we will draw a line from the second integrator and label it with r and now uh, then we will insert the function with the to the vector and return to r as you can see from the block and we can insert a function block from the uc define function library and connect it output to the input of the first integrator and edit the function block by double clicking it and we'll change its function to the flowing uh, this will be the parameter uh, input for the function and then we will begin to construct the input vector by feeding back the step signal from the integrators and forming vector with a max block uh, insert the max block uh, signal routing library and connect its output to the input of the beam block and then uh, edit it uh, change the number into four the input into four uh, and then connect it with the first signal to the first output of the max block as you can see the diagram and now we will construct the signal from the output uh, we will insert a block from the left side and insert gain to connect the data block and change its uh, gain delete value and then we will connect the output of the gain block to the third input to the mark block uh, this will be labeled be, this will be labeled as an alpha and then we will insert a duplicate block to the continuous library and press it underneath the alpha signal line uh, and then we will tap line off the output of the gain block and connect it to the input of the derivative block uh, with lastly we'll connect the output of the derivative derivative block to the fourth input of the max block so as you can see this will be the full diagram of the uh, simulation modeling and then uh, we will start to open the loop response uh, we will make it as open loop response uh, we will create new model from the simulating file menu and uh, insert a subsystem block uh, from the subsystem library and we will copy the model and paste it to the new file uh, now we will have the ball and beam model for the open loop response uh, secondly, we will insert step block and connect the input to the ball and the beam model. Uh, we will edit the step block and change the step time value to zero. Uh, we will close the box, uh, close the step block diagram box, uh, insert a second scope block and connect it to the output ball and beam model. So this will be the full diagram of the open loop system. Uh, okay, for the open loop system, uh, when we run, it will not having significant value before adding some uh, commands. And after add some commands, we are able to run the simulation. Uh, we will run it, select, uh, press the run button, and simulation finish. When the simulation finish, it will have the graph show the scope of the uh, simulation for the open loop system uh, secondly uh, from the open loop system we can extract equivalent state space transfer function model in the matlab so uh, the command will be add into into the matlab as you can see to know the result into the command and uh, press run will we will be able to result uh, to know the result uh, lastly to know the step response uh, we will be adding another command uh, to verify the model uh, simply enter the command and run the simulation and we will have the step response uh, graph so for 
for last step, we will be lead, building a lead component center. So for the model, we will bring up the open loop ball and the model beam window. Uh, the, the line uh, that connect the step block and the ball beam model block. Uh, it sets sample function from the block to the continuous library and connect its output to the input of the ball and beam block. Uh, we will edit the transfer function block and change the number to 10.10. 10 uh, one, I'm sorry, 10.01. Uh, it's the monitor to 1.5. Then change the label to lead compensator. Uh, we will insert gain to lead compensator and connect its output to the lead compensator input, uh, changing the gain to 337.1. So we will add the sum block uh, to the left hand block and change the value to plus to connect the output of the sum block into the gain block. So connect the step block and to be for this, lastly, connect the step block to the positive input of the sum block. So for after this, we will have this diagram and from this diagram, we will have the simulation. After the simulation complete, we will gonna have the a graph for the closed loop system, uh, closed loop response. So that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mama Hazi Bezubi, uh, ID metric FB18120. Uh, I will present uh, about the methodology. Uh, for your info, uh, this will be using uh, MATLAB command in this tutorial. Uh, the design criteria for this problem are setting the time less than 3 seconds uh, and the second one is overshoot less than 5%. Okay, open loop root locus. The main idea of the root locus design is to estimate the closed loop response from the open loop root locus plot by adding zeros and or holes to the original system and which is adding a compensator, the root locus and thus the closed loop response will be modified. Let us first view the root locus for the plan in the open loop. Create a new M5 with the following MATLAB code in your order to model the plan and the plot the root locus. Now run the M5 and you should see the following root locus. As you can see, the system has two poles at the origin which go to <clears throat> of two infinity along the imaginary axis. The design criteria, criteria can also be plotted onto the root locus using the sgrid command. This command generates a grid of constant damping ratio and natural frequency. Note that the equation with TS is found by assuming the system has settled when the response remains within 2%, its final value. From this equation, the damping ratio and the natural frequency were found to be 0 0.7 and 1.9 respectively. The area between the two dot diagonal lines represent location where the percent overshoot is less than 5%. The area outside the curve line represents location where the setting time is less than 3 seconds. Note that no region of the plot falls within the defined criteria shown by this line. To remedy this and bring the root locus into the left hand plane, for stability, we will try adding a lead compensator to the system. Uh, next, a uh, lead controller. A first order lead compensator tends to shift the root locus into the left hand plane. For a more detailed description of the compensator, <coughs> Now let, now let, now add the controller to the plan and view the lo root locus. We will position the zero near the origin to cancel out the one of the poles. The pole of our capacitor will be placed to the left of the origin to pull the root locus further into the left hand plane. Adding the following lines of the MATLAB code to your M5, <coughs> run M5 in the MATLAB command window and you should see the following. Now the branches of the root locus are within our design criteria. And next we are selecting the gain. 
Now that we have moved the root locus into the left hand plane, we select again that will certify our design requirement. We can use the R log find command to help us to do this. Add the code onto any of M5. Then go to the plot slip point near those indicate by mask on the plot below. After doing this, you should see the following output in the MATLAB command window. And final, <clears throat> plotting the closed loop response. The, <clears throat> the value of k can be put into the system and closed loop response to a setup input of 0.25m can be obtained. Add the following lines to your <clears throat> M5 to perform this analysis. Run M5 and select a point on the root locus similar to the select point above. The step response should look like the following. From this plot, we see that when a 0.25M step input is given to the system, both the settling time and percent overshoot design criteria are met. That's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Arif Sulehim bin Suhaini. My ID number is FB18123. Okay. I would like to present about uh, the methodology of our project that have two different methods. So the for the first method is system model. So the transfer function from the gear angle theta s to the ball position rs as, deri as derived in the ball and beam system modeling. So at the new M5, the following code is create a transfer function model in MATLAB. So as the result shown, p underscore ball equal to 0 0.21 s power of 2 and the continuous time transfer function so about the pole zero mat the ball and beam system is a type 2 system which has two plot two poles at the origin as seen in the pole zero mat below since the pole are not strictly in the left half plane the open loop system will be unstable as seen in the step response below so next is about open loop step response now uh, to observe the boss response to a step input on the motor servo gear angle theta one radian step so we will need to add the following line to m5 that is step p underscore ball so as the result shown from this plot, it is clear that the system is unstable in open loop, open loop, causing the ball to roll right off the end of the beam. Therefore, some method of controlling the ball's position in this system is required. So the next one is about the um, PID controller design. So for the proportional control, the closed loop transfer function for proportional control via proportional gain KP equal to 100 can be modeled by copy, copying, copying the following line of MATLAB code into a new M5. So we can model the system response to a step input of 0 0.25 meter and add the following line of the code to M5 and run it. So the result will be shown the output as shown. So as we can see the system remains marginally stable with the addition of a proportional gain. So we trying to the to changing the value of KP and not that the system remain unstable. So for the last one is for proportional derivative control. So we add a derivative term to the controller. So we add a new code 
to M5 and run it to view the system respond to this control method. So the plot should be similar to the following. So as the result shown, the system is stable but the overshoot is much too high and the settling time needs to go down a bit. So from the PID tutorial, PID tutorial in the section on characteristic of P, I and D controller. So we can see that by increasing KD, we can lower the overshoot and decrease the settling time slightly. Therefore, make KD equal to 20 in M5 and run it again. So the output should be as shown. So the overshoot criterion is met but the settling time needs to come down a bit. To decrease the settling time, we may try increasing the KP slightly to increase the rest time. So the derivative gain KD can also be increased to take off some of the overshoot that increasing KP will cause. So after playing with the gain a bit, the following step response plot can be achieved with KP equal to 15 and KD equal to 40. So the as you can see from the plot, all the control objective have been met without the use of an integral controller. So set, settling time for this example is considered achieved when the response is less than 2% of its final value. So remember that for a control problem, there is usually more than one solution for the problem. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Good morning to our lecturer. My name is Kwan Zizan with metric ID FB18016. Now I would like to present about the result and the discussion of our projects. First, the PID controller is used to modify the control system. From the figure 1 show that the value of the gain of the proportional is set up to 1 and show that the P controller is used to reduce the steady state area of the system. However, the angle of the bobbin is show that is still protruding widely in the bobbin system with P control which show is in the slides. Then beside that when the system is using the PT controller which show in the slide the steady state area of the system is more consistent compared to the basic control system and system P controller. However, the difference is not so obviously is because of the gain value of those controllers is set as different values. The increase gain of the gain value could be getting an obvious difference. In the results show that, that the value of the KD is increasing and causing the overshoot percentage is reduced. In addition, the value of the KB increasing. The setting time of the figure is reduced and the overshoot percentage of the value is more smaller and it is almost similar to the desired values. For example, the first KB and KD value that we will use to test the controller is 10. After that, we increase the value of KD to 20 and see that the overshoot percentage is decreasing, which shown in the graph of the slides. And lastly, the increasing of the value of KB and KD to 15 and 40 respectively, which will show that the of overshoot percentage is smaller than the other value, and prove that the overshoot percentage is almost similar to the desired values. The angle of the ball beam is rim and adjusts when the signal is detected by the sensor is sent back to the controller. The PT controller is helping to improve the steady state area of the desired value with the ideal results and that's all for me thank you